if you go with that broad definition of capitalism, does it serve the needs of humanity? There's lots of stuff there that seems to be working. But again, it's working against limits and it basically is unsustainable and it can't go on that way. So does it serve those needs? I think on a short term basis, the efficient allocation of goods and services through a price mechanism using some form of money that is reasonably well accepted, if not guaranteed, is a pretty reasonable way of organizing stuff. I don't want to live in an autocracy where there's no market economy. I think that that would be um, a scary place to be. On the other hand, I don't want to live in a system in which there's no regulation of markets. So call it what you will, call it um, um, a more heterodox capitalism or um, a kind of a a new sort of technological humanism in which maybe individuals have um, more control because of course we haven't even gotten into the fact that the, the biggest resource economically out there right now is our individual data. I think to me capitalism is robust and serves the need of uh, humanity. At least uh, it's a good, could be a good tool to provide prosperity for, 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 for all, um, but only if it's uh, together and complementary uh, with the liberal order. And it has to be something that people can vote or not vote for. And so that means it has to be in a democratic system. Otherwise, we could have prosperity and the rule of law, but without democracy and uh, with all the problems that this uh, uh, involves. One could imagine as such a uh, economic system then which you know is dealing with the allocation of these scarce resources uh, in such a way that it leads to a sufficient production of goods and services to the benefit of the individual or the private citizen but in a manner which is healing caring regenerative you know for all the likes you know the employees uh, the community uh, the planet and also uh, the capital stakeholder in the full process I think most people would broadly agree that capitalism generates lots of goods. Uh, you know, that's there. But there's been a sense right from the outset that it may not be serving the needs of humanity. When we think about the way, the, the kind of concerns about what happens in firms and how people spend in their entire lives working really as drones, it's really kind of a very tragic, uh, uh, you know, history, if you will. Of course, people are richer and healthier as well, but, you know, uh, in, in some sense, capitalism, the way that it's, it's developed, has not always uh, served the needs of humanity. My view is that we must make more visible progress in respect of a fairer and more equitable capitalism that works for all, especially the poorer and the weaker citizens of the world. I do believe uh, that we ha have one human race, one race, the human race, I believe that no one benefits when anyone is in distress. So if we don't have capitalism that works for all and addresses all the various forms of inequalities, we will neither have prosperous citizens nor have a safe and peaceful planet. Imagino otro mundo y, y estoy en contra del concepto tan instalado en la actualidad de la nueva normalidad. No quiero más esta normalidad, no quiero esta desigualdad, no quiero esta invisibilización del trabajo, de la división sexual del trabajo, pero además tampoco quiero que se siga presuponiendo la elasticidad infinita del trabajo de las mujeres. Creo que todos debemos pensarnos un sistema económico distinto, pero arraigado en un sistema político transformador. There is no reason why we can't continue with capitalism. It's most likely to continue in some ways. But it does need adjustment in order to serve people's needs. Now, some people argue for degrowth, say that uh, we need to completely get away, get away from the idea of growth and economic growth. I'm not one of those people. I do think it really is about how we use frameworks to distribute growth and target it to the right places. 
in order for people to benefit. And I think economics actually helps us to do that. An enormous amount of our, our productive work, our reproductive labor that, that keeps us, you know, going individually and collectively is carried out in the family where, you know, some families are more egalitarian, some families are more hierarchical, but no family is organized on the basis of, of the pursuit of profit. And then obviously we have a huge public sector in the world as well. We have public schools and public libraries and public transit and fire and police services and so on. So we, we already have an enormous amount of non-capitalist organization of production around us. We don't have to imagine it. The challenge intellectually is to generalize from this stuff, to recognize how these principles can be applied more broadly. In terms of developing ideas to best serve humanity and the future of our planet and the future of our societies, we do need to change things because um, if you look at the metrics on the, the environment and on climate, these things are getting worse. I don't think we can leave it to markets to figure out what the right signals are because often markets will direct you to things that might actually make the problem worse. So we really need to take charge of uh, our destiny and the destiny of the planet and solve these problems. In fact, we must already realize that the multidimensional global crisis is developing. There is a lot of talk that something needs to be done, but there is no case and the situation is only getting worse. There is no answer. Remember after the crisis 2008-2009, how many slogans and how many appeals were saying by the leaders of the states something needs to be done and what happens nothing the answer is to think strategically counting not for today and not for the near future for decades <laughs>